I've got kind of a big problem. My roof is full of solar panels and my electric bill is still over $500 a month in the hot Florida summer. So in this video, I'm gonna do something about it and use Home Assistant and a few different power monitors from Emporia to figure out why in the world I'm using so much power and then reduce that consumption using automation, ideally without changing any of my habits or making any compromises. And the obvious first step to all this is to figure out where all of my power and in turn my money was going. And my house has two different sub panels, so I needed to buy two Emporia View 3 power monitors. And I got one with a full set of 16 current transformers for my main house panel, and a second one with only eight for my pool panel. And by the way, this isn't sponsored or anything, and I bought all this stuff on Amazon with my own money like a normal person. Anyways, the strength of the Emporia monitors over something like the Sense Energy monitor that I'm replacing is that each individual circuit gets its own sensor. So you get much more granular data about what's using power versus the sense that just tries to discover devices based on their electrical signature. And as an aside, the Sense Energy Monitor is easily the worst smart home purchase that I've ever made. And for instance, it's never been able to differentiate between my upstairs and downstairs AC units in the last three years since I bought it. And most of the devices that it actually was able to discover are just power tools that I only use a few times a year. In contrast though, each of the Emporia monitors has two large current transformer clamps that go onto each leg of your main electrical service. And each 120 volt circuit gets its own clamp. And for 240 volt circuits, you can either use one clamp if everything on the circuit is 240 volts, or you can use two clamps if your downstream circuits are both 120 and 240 volts. And unfortunately, while the eight clamps were plenty for my pool sub panel, 16 wasn't enough for my garage service, so I did have to combine a couple circuits by putting a single clamp around two 100 120 volt leads that were on the same phase, and then that just combines those two rooms in the app. Depending on the size and type of electrical panel that you have, and whether your house has arc fault breakers like mine, the installation may be pretty tight. And as a result, I don't think I'm gonna be leaving mine installed long-term in my main panel, since it looks like a total mess. But you could definitely clean up the install significantly by shortening the wires of each CT to be the exact right size for your installation. I also had a few specific devices that I wanted to collect even more granular data on, so I also got eight of the Emporia power monitoring plugs for equipment that I think might be especially problematic. And when you add those to the app, they nest under whichever circuit you select, and then they subtract that amount of energy from the overall circuit so you don't get double readings. And using those tools, I was able to figure out a general baseline of where all my power was going over the course of three hot Florida summer days before I tried to change anything with automations. And you can see that by far, my biggest expense was air conditioning. And to keep my first floor at 78 degrees, it takes 12.49 kilowatt hours, which at my electric rate of 17.09 cents per kilowatt hour, cost me $2.14 a day or $64 a month. And to keep my second floor cool, it costs about twice that much at $4.20 a day or about $127 a month. And I know heat rises and we do keep the second floor two degrees cooler than the first, but this seems like a big problem that I might be able to potentially fix. The other strange thing that I do is cool my garage with a mini split because that's where I film a lot of my videos and that's where I have my golf simulator. And that costs $2.36 a day or $71 a month, which is more than I spend to cool my entire downstairs. And that means that I'm spending around $262 a month in the hot summer months just to cool my house, which does seem pretty high, but it might actually be in a typical range for a house my size in Tampa when it's consistently over 90 degrees outside. However, my second not so typical expense is that I have a massively overbuilt network, a security camera setup, a NAS, and three fairly powerful desktop computers. And I put a smart plug on each of those three areas called main rack, office equipment, and garage rack, and those three spaces together used an average of 22.67 kilowatt hours per day, or about $3.87, which comes out to $116 a month for powering computers and networking equipment, which seems pretty excessive. So starting with that low hanging fruit, I am ashamed to admit that my wife and I basically never turn off our computers since we're constantly getting up and down from them throughout the day. We've tried Windows Sleep Mode on these computers and it's always been incredibly buggy and causes display issues and peripheral disconnections, but I have been experimenting with Hibernate and it appears to be much more stable, at least on these two computers. So to start automating that process, I installed a Home Assistant PC control software called Hass Agent, and I first set them to just hibernate when I run my bedtime routine that also turns off all the lights, it closes the curtains, and makes sure all the doors are locked. And since I go to bed around midnight and I turn my computer on in the morning around 8 a.m., that should be a solid eight hours of energy savings per computer. 
On top of that, I added an automation to hibernate my wife's computer when she leaves the house, and I also added one to hibernate my computer when I leave, but with the added detail of waking it up when I come back home using Home Assistant's wake on land functionality, so it will always be ready to go when I sit down. For the golf simulator computer, the reason that I rarely turned it off is that loading up and logging into the Unicore View software takes longer than it does to set up the whole sim. So being able to keep that on and logged in is important to me, which Hibernate should be able to do. And since I already have an Amazon Echo command to control the power of the stereo and the projectors in the garage, there's no reason it couldn't also Hibernate and wake the computer on the same command. So turn off the golf simulator. So with pretty easy automations and basically no compromises, we went from an average of 22.6 kilowatt hours a day to an average of 14.2 kilowatt hours, which is a savings of about $1.46 a day just by hibernating computers when they're not in use, something that I really should have done years ago. Next, I needed to tackle my main expense, which is air conditioning. And I started with the easiest one. The mini split in the garage used an average of 13.83 kilowatt hours per day in my initial tests. And I didn't really wanna make any compromises since it takes the garage kind of a long time to heat up and cool down. So only turning it on when I'm actively in the garage is not really an option, but I can be pretty confident that I won't be using the garage after 10 p.m. or before 6 a.m. So I can power it down during those hours. And since the sun's not out and my garage is decently insulated, it shouldn't warm up too much. However, my mini split isn't directly smart home enabled, so I needed another way to control it, and thankfully I already had a SwitchBot hub mounted in the garage, so it was as easy as adding my air conditioner as an infrared device and programming the on-off buttons manually using the IR learning function. I then used Home Assistant's SwitchBot integration to make an automation to turn off the AC at 10 p.m. and then wait eight hours and turn it back on. And not running the garage AC for eight hours a day decreased my usage from an average of 13.83 kilowatt hours to 10.1 kilowatt hours, which is a savings of 64 cents a day, bringing my total daily savings to $2.10 a day. Next, my two main air conditioning units are already controlled by Ecobee thermostats, but I've never really been happy with any of the automations that I made, and they always just seem to make the house less comfortable than setting a 78 hold downstairs and a 75 hold upstairs. And with two people working from home, there are really very few times that the house is completely empty and we are never on a regular enough schedule that we could just let the house heat up while we're gone and cool down for a planned return. Still, for the purpose of this video, I decided to give Ecobee's scheduling another shot and I automated a schedule that sets the cooling set point downstairs to 82 degrees at night since all of our bedrooms are on the second floor. And I also made a schedule to set the upstairs temperature to 76 during the day and then drop it down to 75 at night. And I know those aren't huge changes, but the idea for this whole thing was zero compromises. And according to the data from Emporia View, taking the thermostats off of a hold and adding schedules saved me exactly zero dollars. And it actually raised my power usage downstairs from 12.49 kilowatt hours to 13.1 kilowatt hours. And I was lucky to have six days in a row with nearly identical weather, but in all honesty, unlike the computer automations, it's almost impossible to compare daily AC usage since weather makes such a huge huge difference in ways that are actually really difficult to predict. And all of this sent me down a rabbit hole comparing my hourly usage with the shade patterns of my side yard using security camera footage. And then I was trying to figure out a way to only turn the AC on when my two compressors were in the shade. But all I ended up doing was letting my house heat up to uncomfortable temperatures for basically unnoticeable energy savings. Moral of the story, air conditioning in Florida accounts for a massive amount of power usage, but there really aren't any magical savings to be had other than just improving your insulation or making compromises with your comfort. So disappointed with my AC findings, I systematically went around the house and I turned on and off lights and devices to measure their individual power draw using the instantaneous power usage chart in the Emporia app to see if I could find anywhere else that I could save some easy money. And here's a list of all the devices that I documented, and here are the ones that I thought were surprisingly high, and these ones were much lower than I expected. Every day, my variable speed pool pump used a pretty consistent amount of energy, and I've never really been able to get a definitive answer on the correct speed to run it. So it seemed like another easy target, and all I did was lower the RPM from 1800 down to 1500, and I was surprised to see a 145 watt decrease, which at a 10 hour runtime is good for 21 cents a day. And my garage lights use about 75 watts, so turning them off at bedtime and back on in the morning saves 12 cents every night. I was also surprised that my 65 inch LG OLED TV uses about 190 watts. And I'm not gonna automate it, but just being aware of not leaving the TV on when no one's watching it can save a significant amount of energy. 
So after all my automations were said and done, overall, as of writing this script, I was able to drop my daily power usage from an average of 99.27 kilowatt hours to 77.94 kilowatt hours, which is a difference of 21.33 kilowatt hours or $3.65 of savings every day. And that comes out to $1,331 a year, making this a pretty worthwhile experiment. However, I did spend $400 on energy monitors and realistically, I could have put all these automations in place without doing that. But the Emporia app definitely provided me with the information that I needed to target the biggest power users and the motivation to actually do something about them. And I also don't want to downplay the immediate gratification of seeing that usage go down in real time. So in those ways, they were totally worth it. And those are things that my Sense Energy Monitor never gave me. So I would definitely recommend the Emporia monitors, especially if you just have a single panel and you can get away with just buying one of them. For Home Assistant users, the Emporia monitors have a Hacks integration that uses the Emporia Cloud to give you a separate device with three sensors for each circuit, and if you really want a local only solution, the Emporia View 3 can also be flashed with ESP Home, but that obviously prevents you from using the View app, which I think is a shame because it is extremely well designed and easy to use. Again, this video isn't sponsored in any way, but I do have links down in the description for the Emporia monitors and the SwitchBot hub, and as always, I appreciate when you use those links since as an Amazon affiliate, I do earn a small commission on the sale at no cost to you. I also want to say thank you to all of my patrons over at Patreon for their continued support of my channel, and if you're you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.